Okay, thank you very much. Um, the idea of this research, uh, it's my PhD uh, research, started because I'm an archaeologist and I was thinking like, what can we really do with 3D reality-based model? Because we can do documentation, we can do um, visualization, but, um, and talking with Professor Perucchio, uh, it, we started with this idea of trying to find if there is the possibility to use the 3D reality-based model, models for final element analysis. So, what um, the idea was like, um, simulating the structural behavior of ancient structures or statues is uh, complicated. Also because when we uh, deal with complex uh, architectures, complex geometries, uh, Sometimes we have to do some approximation. And on the other hand, we cannot use directly the 3D reality based models because they are too heavy, too complex for finite element analysis software. So well, we started thinking about a new method to use directly the 3D reality based models into finite element analysis software. And um, we started with um, using retopology that allows a strong simplification of the models, maintaining a high accuracy. Um, and these retopologized meshes were then suitable to be converted in NERFs and then volumetric models for finite algorithm analysis. No. Yes. So this is more or less the pipeline of the methodology. The acquisition of the models through photogrammetry or laser scanning. Uh, so the acquisition of the high resolution triangular mesh, the simplification of the mesh, the conversion of the nerves with an automatic tool, uh, the creation of the volumetric mesh, and then the analysis. Uh, simplification of meshes can be done in two different ways. The first one is using triangular mesh. And uh, you can put the desired number of polygons or a deviation between the simplified and the high resolution model. Or you can use quadrangular elements with retopology that allows you to redefine the mesh structure it resembles the structure and uh, uh, it follows the shape of the object. Uh, the main the big problem is topology. Like dealing with topology is really difficult because um, the many problems arose while trying to clean the topology of the models to create the volumetric um, models for finite element analysis. And especially with triangular meshes. With retopology is a little bit better because it's, um, it creates a more um, clean, geometrically uh, organized mesh. And this in here you can see the, the differences. Like this is a statue at Uffizi. Um, the, the simplification is more or less the same. It's 32,000 polygons, vertices, sorry. And the problem with the okay, the problem with the triangular mesh is that sometimes you, you can have sharp angles. So the self-intersecting and non-manifold uh, elements uh, are really too much sometimes. With quotes, it's, uh, it's much more, I would say, elegant. <laughs> it's like, yeah, geometrically mm, simple. Uh, so, what is retopology? Um, it permits to resample the models of the original mesh, uh, allowing you to put a uh, lower number of vertices, maintaining the accuracy, because it creates a kind of uh, um, new mesh on the model. Uh, so, it creates a new topology. Um, the meshes then they were automatically uh, converted in nerves uh, that are the representation of mathematical surfaces that allows to uh, export the meshes into volumetric models. That was that's what I wanted. So the pipeline was this. 
the acquisition, the creation of the mesh with Addison Photoscan for, uh, for photogrammetry, mesh lab, polyworks, or geomagic for um, laser scanning. The correction of the topology using mesh lab, it's quite good mesh lab with the, the correction of the topology. The retopology was uh, done using ZBrush because it's uh, it really stable. I also tried to use instant meshes that is um, open uh, uh, software made from uh, the ATH in Zurich and the Siena in Italy. Uh, but I had some problem in topology co correction there. So after the retopology, there was another correction and control of the topology. So correction of the topological errors, the creation of the nerves, the, in the import of the volumetric model into the finite element analysis software. And the, um, it was decided to use the 10 noctate hydrons as a volumetric element because they give you, a, let's say, a higher accuracy in the, um, in the analysis. And then a static structural analysis and a model analysis were done. I have to say that I'm not an engineer, so the, the, the analysis here are only to see if the methodology works, let's say. Uh, well, I, I was supported by the <laughs> engineer. And uh, this was the correction that was followed for the topological error. So the main, the main thing was the non-manifold and the duplicate vertexes and faces, and also the self-intersecting. Also because when you have self-intersecting faces, it's really hard or almost impossible to have to mesh the volumetric model into the finite element analysis software. Then the retopology was done using ZBrush, using the tool Z, Z remesher, and it was taking into account this parameter that is called the adaptive size. Uh, you have a slider and you can decide uh, how many, the number, a, a number, it's a, it's a number, it's a, it doesn't have a value. So the lower the uh, number is, for example, in this case, 30, it creates a mesh that in which the polygons are as square as possible, um, approximately at the same size, and also if you put a number in the polygon count slider, it creates a mesh that is closer to the number that you uh, put. Using a higher number, so the, the highest, 100, uh, especially when, uh, when simplifying a lot the, the mesh, the elements are more rectangular to be be better fit the model. Uh, and also, it, uh, the density changes because where the geometry is complex, uh, of course, you, you will have more elements and, and you have a less control of, uh, over the polygon, polygon count. These are the test objects, some, not, not all. Uh, the, mm, the first uh, tests were done on uh, lab, mm, laboratory specimen, steel laboratory specimen, only because it's the only uh, object that I had for which I, I, can, um, I could uh, calculate the theoretical stress. So I had a, a clear and um, correct uh, number to, to which compare the results. And then, oops, sorry, and then um, two studies from the FITSI, so the horse and the, the, the Aristogiton, and then a tower in, um, in uh, Milan that is uh, the tower of the cultures of the ancient Roman circus. Uh, I will go really fast on this because it's uh, <laughs> quite annoying, but uh, I, I did three kind of uh, simplification, so triangular simplification, uh, two retopology changing the number of this parameter, uh, starting from uh, 500 to 92,000 polygons, and compared all the results. Uh, this is only to, to show that, as expected, the mean and the standard deviation uh, between the high resolution model and the simplified one uh, showed for the triangular simplification the, the best results, but it was expected because retopology adds a smoothness to the, um, 
to the to the meshes, and these are some uh, comparison, like only to see the results. Uh, and it's it's really nice to see that when when the uh, elements are rectangular and you can clearly see the lines where the and this is the comparison between the nerves. Uh, the, thing, the important thing also is that starting from a quadrangular mesh, because nerves uh, are made, uh, is made of quadrangular patches, of course, when, when you create nerves from a triangular mesh, the number of, nerve, of patches is duplicated. So it means more um, heavier uh, models. So for the specimen, uh, this is the theoretical stress, so 11.62 megapascal, and these are the parameters for the attraction. And uh, we did a convergence analysis, and what we, we found is that using the adaptive size parameter at 100, um, we had the best result. And also, uh, the important thing was that um, when you, uh, it, it's, uh, it's important to find the size of the volumetric model close to the size of the superficial element of the mesh. So another uh, test was done on a violin, and it was interesting because in this case, not me, it's like I only created the, the volumetric model and other colleagues did the analysis, but they were able to do some laboratory analysis to compare. And it was another uh, confirmation that <laughs> the methodology works. And so going to the cultural heritage, these are the um, three uh, models and the parameters for the static structural analysis. This is uh, the comparison, and these are the results for the, um, this is the structure, static structural, maximum principal uh, stress. Uh, and uh, model analysis, only only to to check and to to have a confirm. And this is interesting because for the tower, as I, uh, I expected, because the Roman tower ends in at this uh, level more or less, and then during the medieval period, uh, they, they built this thing, <coughs> and it, it seems that it's quite working. And then, um, you already have seen this, uh, now I'm trying to, to deal with this <laughs> uh, boy. And it's really, in, in, in this case, I, I'm going to have a little bit of problems in the meshing uh, part of the finite element uh, software. Uh, I don't have problems in topology, like, everything is okay, also the software is not complaining, saying that there are such intersecting elements, but um, I cannot mesh it, so I, I have to check why. That's why I was saying that the topological control is one of the most important and difficult part in the, in the job. And what I did with the, with the baptistry was also to try uh, easy uh, segmentation because uh, uh, the, the lower part is made of stone, the dome is made of masonry, so of course you need to, to give different parameters for these um, uh, two parts. But there is also another problem, all, the, all the, the lower part is covered by marble and they are different. So this is another problem that arose after the, the, the end of the PhD, the material. Dealing with ancient structure means dealing with different materials, so it's, uh, it's something that has to be investigated. So, conclusion. The, method, the methodology worked uh, thanks to some laboratory tests that gave, uh, of course the laboratory specimen is not a cultural heritage, but at least gave some uh, specification. The violin permitted to confirm the process, the problem, as I said, is the meshing part, so the, the, the correction of the topology and the, the, the study of the properties of different materials, and then the segmentation, that is something that arose at the end. Like, of course, I cannot use all the parameters for 
every kind, every mm, piece of structure. It has the structure has geometrical, uh, structural parts or decorative parts. So this is something that has to be studied. And thank you. <laughs>